Hello everyone and welcome to Sequel Features. Today I want to cover a very interesting topic, one new database which probably we never talked before, PostgreSQL. And we'll be doing again in the container, this is the series for that. Now, not only will install PostgreSQL in a container, we'll create two more containers, one for Adminer, which is a common tool to connect to different type of databases, plus pgadmin4 uh, container as well. And don't forget, we'll be checking how you can just use the Visual Studio code to connect to this PostgreSQL database as well. So you don't have to basically go out of one interface and trying to learn different interface. So let's get going. Before we start, there's some housekeeping. This is the repository which you can download to try this particular exercise. Uh, it's media stack. Under that, you go to the episode 44, PostgreSQL, and you find two files which we'll be using to do this demo. And if you're playing along with this, this series, you should be able to do it yourself. So same project I opened. And as you can see, if you are new and starting for the first time, you can just run these three commands and that will really be there. So I'm gonna go move to the right folder, CD media stack. There you go. And if you are just refreshing the existing repository where you tried the previous uh, videos, then you can just run these three commands and that will take you there. So first thing, before we start today, we're gonna standardize the way we are doing connecting to the different VMs and containers and doing the activity. So I'm gonna show you some shortcuts, how rather than connecting to the virtual machine all the time, which has your Docker installed, how can you do it from your client machine directly? So first thing, you just control shift P, that brings you, click on remote SSH, connect to window, click on configure SSH, pick the first link, and now we'll be copying two entries here. Let me explain this. So we have our VM container where we are having the Docker and we are doing everything. So that's the IP address and this is the user we connect with. This is our Proxmox host. And you can see uh, that's the IP and that's the login we are using. We already have all the keys, SSH keys in place, so we don't have to worry about connecting it. So I saved it. Now I should be able to just connect to Proxmox and run the command on Proxmox. And you can see Proxmox name, server name is Proxfire. Same, I'm gonna check what's the ID. And you can see the root ID is zero. Same thing we do on container, let's run both commands. And you can see container name is vSQL Grafana, that's the name we put in in the last episode. And now we can see the ID and here the HV admin is the login we are doing with. Now, one more command we can try that will tell us what all is running on this VM. And as you can see, it's running Grafana and SQL, that's where we left it in the previous episode. So let's check the snapshot. We connect to the Proxmox and we are checking what snapshots are there. So we have post Grafana SQL snapshot. That's where we left the last session. And if you have any doubts, you can run this command to basically roll back and start the VM. Right now the virtual machine is running. So we're gonna, uh, we just checked the, uh, all the containers running here. We can check again, only two of them is there. Now let's uh, remove this folder if it already exists. And we're gonna create a folder, Postgres data. This is the folder where we want Postgres to store its data so that we can access it quickly, take the backups and all that in the future. Now, we're gonna pull Postgres latest images. So we're gonna pull Postgres adminer, uh, PG admin, and finally we'll check what all images are there. So I'm gonna execute this. All three images are downloaded, so we're gonna check which all images we now have, and you can see PG Admin 4, Grafana, PostgreSQL, Adminer, and SQL Server. So all the images are here, so now we are ready to do the work, but as you know, the best practice, we don't wanna download it again and again if there are any kind of issues, so we're gonna take a snapshot, we'll call this pre-PostgreSQL. As you know, already Post Grafana SQL is there, 
So it doesn't matter. We can take one more snapshot and safeguard ourselves for any kind of issues. So if something goes wrong in next exercise, you can come back here and you can restore it to this snapshot and that way you don't have to download all the images again in case you have a slow internet or something. So we're gonna run it, uh, some of these command, we connect the container, check again, what all is running there. Exactly, so the volumes, if you look at it, there is only one volume which is for SQL Server. Uh, connections, we already checked, nothing else is running. So now, this is our Docker Compose file, which we want to transfer to our container, and we created this SQL Server folder in the previous uh, two episodes back, which is what we are using it. And what we're doing is we are adding more to the same Docker Compose file. So we had Grafana, which is as no change in that SQL Server is already there. Now we are adding a new container, Postgres. We're calling it Postgres, username, database, password, as well as the PG data. We are defining that variable as well as the volume. So this is where we will be storing the PS data folder. Okay, and this is the port, and then our network, restart, then adminer, this is another management database utility, and you can see it's running on the port 10,000, then we are running PGP admin, taking the latest version, and it's also running on the port 5050. Now, as you know, PGP admin require email and password, so I just put them there, and we'll be using that to log into PGP admin once the server is up and ready. And you can see there are a couple of uh, drivers defined. That would be it. So let's close it. So let's copy the file. We just copy the file to the container. This is the container. Now we're using the name. We don't need to log on to the VM. Sorry, not container, to the virtual Docker machine. And now, I can bring all the virtual machines up. As you can see, started creating the new containers available in this. And we can run this next command to take a good look at, see Postgres is running on 5432, pgadmin on 5050, adminer is on 10,000, then Grafana and SQL you already know. Now let's try to connect to Postgres SQL. So here's the data tool. I already have it, so I'm gonna delete it. Let's create a connection. We're gonna name it, say, PS1. Can name anything. I'm gonna copy the connection details. You can click to any program. As you know, this is a database utility. So if you go to extensions, type, database you should be able to download this database client so when you click at it it's already installed so this is the extension you want to download to connect it so let's connect it it's port is defined here postgres postgres only thing we need is the password so let's copy the passwords password is coming from the docker compose file as you can see we defined it here so Let's add the password and we say save. Here you can see Postgres, we are able to connect and there are no tables right now, so it's empty. So let's go ahead, create some tables. So I'm gonna now SSH to the container. For this exercise, we're gonna show you how you can connect to this Postgres container and run, you know, do the, some connection and do some stuff and then we'll show you how you can do it from outside also. So I'm changing the user PostgreSQL, now starting psql, so now I'm on database console. Uh, let's check what all databases are there. And you can see two are there, if I look at it, so you can see Postgres, we have these databases here. Let's connect to the Postgres database and create a table. So as we create a table, the table will be visible here. So we can see table just showed up. Now let's insert some rows, test data. 
and we can check in the container that how many rows are returned and we can exit from that container by just this command and let's exit it so we exit from the postgres user to root and now we exit again to the container and i don't need to be in the container so i'm going to execute it again because we are back to our windows client machine and at this point we have the data visible so now let's use the adminer adminer is Basically, so this is the 10,000 IP is there. So let's open it up so you can see this is Postgres. You can connect to MSQL and any other tool with that. So it is good in that sense. So let's get our IP, server so details. Postgres is our username, database, and my secret password is password. So I'm going to click login with it and you can see we enter into it table is there and you can see the columns is there you can select data and you can all that so basically this is how you connect now let's look at the, another tool which we have which is pg admin 4 pg admin 4 is the latest version so let's click here it logs in and as we discussed for PG admin to connect you need to use uh, the login and password defined here in PG admin when we create it this is the login and this is the password so we're going to be using this I already have the login and password saved so I'm going to connect and we connect to PG admin now you can right click register server let's give it a name we call it PS1 put so this is our password so let's put it here username would be name and our host name let's pick the host name from here port is already defined in the next column so i'm just going to save it and as you can see immediately the moment i save it we can see everything about it in databases you can expand databases expand the schema and then go to the tables and you can see your table is there if you want you can basically view the query too to view the data and that table right So you can see the three rows we inserted is there. So that's, we <coughs> not only cover all that, and once we are done with that, uh, now we move to next step. Since we are done and our Postgres is up and running, SQL is up and running, Grafana is up and running, uh, all the both uh, PG admin and admin is up and running. It's time to delete the old snapshot and create a new snapshot. So let's take a look at the current status of our snapshots. And you can see we have Grafana and pre postgres equal to two are there. But before I delete the snapshot, I want to take a new snapshot, which is post postgres. So let's take that first. And now we will be deleting the pre postgres snapshot and finally post grafana sql and there is no need to start it because it's already started but i so we can come on the slide so this is how now we're ready for the next exercise where anytime we can uh, roll back to postgres post postgres and we can do rest of the exercise or any other container or anything you want to build upon that or you want to modify the docker compose making sure that you're not missing anything so that's what you can achieve it so as you learn in today's tutorial you learn how to set up host names for quick remote command executions so you don't have to you know, SSH into the virtual machines to do most of the time. So our overall process is quite expedited because of that.
Next thing you learn is how to, uh, we reviewed the Docker Compose and how we set up the key things there. Third activity, which we covered is to create a Postgres admin and PG admin for containers. And finally, we tested the Postgres connectivity, making sure that you can connect not only using Visual Studio code, but through PG admin and admin to the database and to your testing. Hope you like this video, you learned something in the video. If you do, make sure to like and subscribe the video and share with your friends. Thank you.